What is happening, YouTube? Welcome back to Brown Town. I'm sure y'all have seen this in a couple videos, so I figured might as well make a video about it and tell you what I think about it, my likes, dislikes, and I'm gonna actually show how to put on a third function kit. And if you are looking at one of these tractors and you have done your research online as I had before I purchased it, it says that these tractors are third function ready. And the picture it shows, it shows the third function valve mounted to the bottom of the hydraulic valve. So stupid me thought, hey, it's ready. All you gotta do is probably hook up your hoses and it's third function ready. Nope. And that valve that they show on their website talking about it does not exist on the tractor when you buy it. If you want third function on this tractor, through TYM, like I got, cost you $1,100. A tractor that is not third function ready, you can buy a universal kit for 500 bucks. Cost me $1,100 to get something that I thought the tractor would include. Stupid me, I know. So, I'm gonna show how to put on the third function kit in case anyone's looking into it and show some other stuff about the tractor and uh i'm probably gonna do a step at a time on the third function then video it because the instructions were written in english by a korean so it's kind of broken english can't knock them they speak and can write two languages i don't even speak one well so there's that but um yeah, I'm going to try to decipher that and do a step. And once I figure it out and get it done, then I'll video and go, okay, this is how you do this and move on to the next step. So uh, I'm going to read through the destructions real quick. Try to get it figured out where I need to go first. And uh, once I do that, I'll bring y'all back in and say, hey, this is what you do. So stand by and we will get this figured out together. Say hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> All right, for some reason, about halfway through is where it shows your first thing you need to do. But the instructions say right here, I don't know if y'all can read that. What that says is, better go get yourself a couple beers. So I got mine here on deck, so got that covered. And what I'm going to do... From there up is already on the tractor. That's the block that's there. From here down is this. So what I'm gonna do is assemble as much of this as I can on the bench, then put it on the tractor. And what it shows here is to put these two 90 degree fittings on, which it breaks it down there to the couplings, the 90s, the unions, and a crush washer. So I'm going to put this on here real quick. I already pulled the little plugs out so i'm gonna do that and then go to the next step done is installed these i got it tight here and i went in and teflon that got the crush washer under there and i teflon it but i don't have this tight yet so i can still pivot these if need be i'll tighten that up once everything's plumbed now you put this on is right up under there these four bolts one, two, three, four, come off. And that goes up there in its place. I don't really know how much hydraulic fluid I'm fixing to have to deal with. So I got a bucket there. And I'm on probably break three of them out. And then the last one, try to zip it out with a drill and have this other one ready to go in. It does come with new bolts and new washers. So you don't have to reuse these four that are in there. So. I'm probably not going to try to video this because uh, I don't want to make a big mess and look like a moron on camera any more than what I already do. So uh, I don't know if I can set the camera up somewhere I might, but I'm going to try to get this done. Hang on tight. All right, I kind of got y'all set up here where y'all can see. Y'all never looked at rock form camera cases. They're awesome. They got magnets built into them and then a bunch of different ways to attach your phone slash camera to things. It makes it really easy to 
just set it up anywhere. Ooh, there's enough powder coating in there. Ooh, wee. There we go. All right, I'm gonna break all these kind of loose except for one. I ain't powder coating, got it all full. Like I said, I don't know if this thing's gonna be gravity fed any fluid or not. So we're gonna take three of them out and have a bucket ready to go. And this thing didn't come with a gasket either, so I don't know if there's one in here, if it's just a machine finish that doesn't require one or if they just forgot to send it. And by the way, getting this thing, good Lord. I tried to go back through my local, or I say local dealer, he's not local, he's five hours away where I actually bought it from, but I tried to use him to get this thing. Yep, we got hydraulic fluid. And I'm telling you, he did not want to help at all. Never got it from him. Ended up having to call TYM, and they told me I had to go through a dealer. So I ended up having to go through the dealer that I tried to originally buy a tractor from, and the salesman there never would call me back. I was trying to get hold of him for four straight days, or three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, to set up a time that I could come pick it up Friday, and he never would call me back. Couldn't get in touch with him at all. So I finally said screw it and went to the guy in Oklahoma and bought it from him and when I went ready got ready to buy this I tried to go back to the guy in Oklahoma to get this he wouldn't give me the time of day I don't know why I don't know what happened if I made him mad because like I said I originally thought that this thing was supposed to come with this valve. So when I questioned him on it, he said, no, sir, that's an option. And I called TYM and they told me the same thing. So I was like, well, I thought maybe there was a mix up or something. I don't know if that made him mad that I went over his head to check or what. Uh, even the people at TYM, I, I showed them on the website what I had seen and they agreed. They're like, yeah, the wording on that is horrible. So, they wouldn't make a deal with me. David's in Oklahoma wouldn't even attempt to assist me anymore. They kept giving me the runaround saying they couldn't get in touch with their representative. So, TYM told me what I needed to do. So, I ended up contacting the dealership that I couldn't buy the tractor from because the salesman never would call me back in Tyler, Texas at Coker. I bought the tractor in Kyle, Oklahoma from David's Trading Yard. Called back over to... Tyler at Coker ended up talking to the same guy that I was trying to buy the tractor from told him what I wanted he said man I'll check it out and get right back with you. Thank you Mr. Steve. Thank you. Ain't heard from him since. Never did call me back. Never heard a word from him. So I waited a few days and called back and talked to a guy named Dave that has got a really thick British English accent super nice guy super helpful and strangely enough within 30 minutes I have my third function kit on a truck headed to Louisiana he was nice enough that instead of I had to buy it through him but instead of it shipping to him and then turn around and having to ship it to me what he did was I paid him over the phone and they shipped it straight to me, which was great. Took, I don't know, ordered it on a Friday and got it the following Thursday, I think. So anyway, we got it, got it put in. No thanks to David's Trading Yard or Steve at Coker and Tyler, but Dave at Coker and Tyler was amazing, as was Heather at TYM. She was the parts lady that I spoke with super nice you can tell just old southern country girl me and her finally got it figured out and got it all here but now i got hydraulic fluid all over my hands and i don't really know what to do with my hands now because i need to turn the recording off so that i can go wash my hands but i, don't, I wonder if i can do it with my nose you want to see if i can do it with my nose 
Let's try it. I got enough sweat on it. Let me get my hat out of the way. There we go. <laughs> I'm coming in for a big old kiss now. Yep. That was easier than I thought. You take a bolt out and put a bolt in to hold the two hoses there. Do it again right inside there. You take literally a bolt out and they give you a new bolt and a little bracket to hold that. Connect your hoses. Your hoses quick connect down here into the plate. And you got wires that are already up in here made for it that clip in there and there. And then you run them, you get the power from up in there. I kind of hit it where you can't really see it. And then you got your three wires right there that come down from your joystick. It may have taken me 30 minutes and Allen wrench to fit that and a wrench to fit the bolts there. And I work for a refinery type situation, so we always use channel locks and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go hook up to the grapple and give her a test drive now. All right, got the old grapple hooked up and it doesn't work exactly like I thought it was going to. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in just a second. Uh, it works fine, I just, when I hooked it up, I kept pushing the two buttons here on the joystick thinking it was gonna do something and it never moved. I was like, well, if I got a loose wire or did I do something wrong, what's going on? So then I figured out, see the clams were completely closed when I hooked to it. So it opens up fine if, see it closes by itself, but if you want to open it and you just push the button, nothing happens. Nothing. But if you pull back on the joystick just ever so slightly, right there, you see it starts to open. I don't know what the deal is with that. Then it, once it comes open, then it'll start going up. I don't think it's a true third function is what I think. I think it's more like a diverter valve or something, but it'll work. I ain't got much, you know, I ain't gonna just be using this thing a whole, whole lot. I got some brush I'm cleaning up, so.